One of the things we often hear when we Christians talk is the word calling. But what does it really mean and how do we know our calling? If you want to know, stick around because that's coming up here on Pursuing the Savior. What is going on? My name is Archie and welcome to Pursuing the Savior. I'm a pastor and a writer and I have a passion for helping people understand the Bible and find the way back to God. And that's what this channel is all about. In this week's episode, we're going to talk about the three aspects of a call, three misconceptions about calling, and three tips to confirm God's calling. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing and hit that little notification bell so you won't miss a thing. And if you're watching on Facebook, don't forget to like or follow our official Facebook page, Pursuing the Savior. Let's get started. First things first, the Lord's call for you to be saved is not the same as the specific call for a particular career that you should take or a specific ministry where you should be serving in. First, let's talk about the effectual call. The effectual call is God's call to salvation, which was adopted from the 1647 Westminster Confession of Faith and is understood as God who sovereignly calls a sinner to salvation. This effectual call causes a person to submit to God and place his saving faith in the Lord Jesus. Let's read 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us to His own glory and excellence. The original Greek word sa salitang called is actually kaleo, which carries the idea of God drawing a person sovereignly instead of simply inviting somebody to come to Him. Ibig sabihin, kusang inilalapit ng Diyos ang isang tao papunta sa Kanya instead na Basta lang niya tinatawag. Now let's talk about the three aspects of a call. There are three elements to discerning a call. Namely, an internal call, o yung sinasabi natin, I want this. An external call, o parang sinasabi natin, I have this gift and I am mature enough to exercise this gift and be a blessing to others. And the last one is a formal call, which means I have been offered the position from a church or a ministry. These three elements can help you discern whether or not you are being called by God for that particular ministry or career. Three misconceptions about calling. First, it's about you. It's not about who you are, what you can do, how much you can earn, what you can buy, or how powerful you can be. Hindi yung mga bagay na yun ang importante. It's about making life better for others and giving God all the glory. God made you a unique person. At binigyan ka niya ng mga gifts para pakinabangan ng iba at magbigay ng kadakilaan sa Diyos. Don't get me wrong. Your skills, your abilities, your talents, they can help you get a job, get paid, buy whatever you want. But ultimately, hindi naman yun ang kahulugan ng buhay. Life is about making God's name known and helping others through your gifts. Let's read 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. As each has received the gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Number two, your calling is your job. That is wrong. Your job and your calling are not the same. Yes, your job pays for the bills. However, yung iyong calling, it is something that you love doing and most of the time, money is not even part of the equation. Your calling defines you. It gives you a sense of meaning and purpose. Your job gives you a defined role, a schedule, and an area where you can specifically exercise that role. On the other hand, your calling mo, sometimes it allows you to go beyond your work hours and your job description in order to make life easier for someone. Minsan yung work or yung job nakakapagod, pero yung calling, yes, nakakapagod siya physically, but it reinvigorates your spirit. Let's read Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Whatever you do, work heartily, as for the Lord and not for men, 
Number three, you get to choose. Again, this is absolutely wrong. Why? Because if we choose a specific calling, that means God did not call us. We called ourselves. Yes, God gives us the freedom to choose for ourselves where to live, what school to go to, what course to take, what company to work for, and many other things. Yes, we may plan for ourselves, but God ultimately directs our paths. He is the one who opens and closes doors. Wala tayong control doon. Minsan, pag sinarado niya ang isang pinto, kahit anong katok natin, wala tayong magagawa. Minsan naman, kahit hindi tayong nagtatry, kusang bumubukas yung mga pinto ng oportunidad para sa atin. And most of the time, He uses other people to take us where He wants us to be. Tignan natin yung Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9. The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Now the question is this, if God establishes our paths, is it wrong to plan for the future? In this regard, I'd like to share an article I read which says, There's nothing wrong with godly ambition or planning for the future, but in all that, make sure that the emphasis is on faithfully serving the Lord where He's placed you until He makes it clear, whether through a shift in desires, input from others, or a change in circumstances, usually a combination of these three, that He is calling you to something else. Now, when you're fulfilling your calling, hindi ibig sabihin yan na habang buhay, nandyan ka na. No matter how well or bad things are right now, they're going to change. Having said that, Tinuturoan tayo ng salita ng Diyos to be content, satisfied, happy where we are exactly. But on the other hand, God also wants us to be adaptable to change. Now, how do I know God's call to ministry? The Bible tells us that we are to serve God and to demonstrate love to others. However, this is a universal call. Ibig sabihin, all of us are commanded to do that. But not all of us are called to serve in a particular ministry. For example, di naman pwedeng lahat tayo pastor or worship leader or usher tayo lahat. But let me give you three things to consider kung paano natin madedesern kung tayo ba ay tinatawag ng Panginoon sa isang particular na minis na ministry or trabaho o ano pa mga mga capacities and offices. Number one, how much do you want it? Let's read 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. The saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. The immediate context of this verse refers to the qualifications for pastors or overseers. However, the principle can be applied in other areas of ministry. Yung salitang desires involves both an internal desire and an external action. A person who is being called for a particular ministry is actively pursuing it because he has a burning desire deep inside of him and he wants to serve God in this way. How bad do you want it? And what are your motives in trying to get into this ministry? Number two, are you gifted to fulfill this role? Each believer possesses God-given talents, gifts, and abilities which can be used to serve others and glorify God. Nagbubukas ng mga oportunidad ng Panginoon for us to utilize those gifts. For example, you are musically inclined, you love to sing, and you enjoy worshiping the Lord. Sana nasa tono din. Maybe a place in the worship team is reserved for you. In other words, if God calls you to serve in a particular ministry, He will first give you the gifts necessary for you to carry out the duties of that particular ministry. Let's read Romans chapter 12, verse 4 to 5. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. Number three. Are you praying for it? Prayer is an important and essential aspect of the Christian life. Let's read James chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. When we pray, not only can we unload our burdens before God, 
we can also ask Him for wisdom and guidance. Minsan, pag nagpipray ako, I'm, I'm confused and I don't know what to do. And then, I cast my cares unto God. Nag-open up ako sa Kanya. At habang ibinubuhos ko akin ng dami ng aking mga nararanasan, ng aking mga tanong sa Kanya, ay unti-unting binibigyan niya ako ng linaw, ng ng karunungan kung paano ko i-handle ang isang particular na sitwasyon. And He also gives me that comfort and that peace na napaka-importante, especially sa panahon natin ngayon. And when it comes to prayers, God responds in a multitude of ways. Oftentimes, He uses His Word. Sometimes, ginagamit naman niya yung mga tao para i-lead tayo sa isang tamang desisyon. And without prayer, it's going to be impossible for us to have an access to these God-given ways of understanding things from a different perspective. In conclusion, God still calls people to serve Him in many different ways. And it's up to us to discern whether or not we're a good fit for a particular ministry. Nevertheless, God gives us the desires, the skills, the gifts, the connections, and the resources so that we can be a part of a particular ministry, serve Him, and be a blessing to others. But let's not forget that in everything we do, even when we are trying to discern God's call and respond to Him, our motives should only be no less than to give glory to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching this video and I hope it has been a blessing to you and help you discern kung ano ba talaga ang calling ng Panginoon para sa iyo. And if you want more videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our official Facebook page. And with that, my friend, I'll see you on the next one.